Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody to Media Day for the uh, Shrine Maple Sugar Bowl football game, which is to be played this Saturday, of course, August 5th. And uh, my name is Christy Morris, I'm with Mount Sinai Shriners, and I am the general chairman for the game. So with that said, I would like to give a, um, a little round of applause for my assistants, uh, Mike Spackman over here, you've probably seen him on campus. Uh, he is our Shrine Liaison from the Maple Sugar Bowl Board of Governors. And Rick Ellis just walked in. Give her a warm welcome. To... And just remember that applause is for them, not me. And the other thing I always open with, if there's anything that uh, you're not satisfied with, that you seem is uh, in disorder, or if there's something wrong, you have one person to blame, and that's me. If uh, everything is going well, and you're happy, and things are just, your elation can't be uh, held back, then I want you to thank the other board members. Uh, also with us today is the New Hampshire Athletic Director, Gary Mayo. Sitting over here, there you go, Gary. And, and Coach Catman is uh, going, about to walk into the door, so when he gets here and he enters, we can give him a round of applause. He's the Vermont Athletic Director. On the count of three. One, two, three. So the other thing I like to announce is uh, we're still early in the week. I ask all the players, uh, not necessarily the coaches, but they can participate, is to please pick up and police after yourself. We don't want to leave trash on the sidewalks or in the dining hall. And I know up to date so far, the reports are you're doing a wonderful job. So uh, applaud yourself for that as well. That includes the dormitories, the cafeterias, the campus, and, and any other place that you might be. And then uh, the second of all, of course, is just to be respectful. Uh, you probably noticed there's other people on campus. There's uh, other activities going on. Spike volleyball I saw. Uh, we just finished up with Legion baseball. So there's a lot of activity here. And just be respectful to each other, including the other team. All right. So that uh, goes without saying. And uh, thank you very much for all your cooperation, any and all cooperation. So what's going to happen today is uh, at, uh, next I'm going to get into the ambassadors and we're going to have Grace. Grace's mom come up and speak to you a little bit, and then Noah's going to come up to you, uh, come up here and speak to you as well. The two ambassadors we have from uh, Shriners Children's in New England, in Springfield, Massachusetts. Although I found out today that Grace lives in my town in Springfield, Vermont. So uh, don't throw darts, guys. Don't throw darts. This is Vermont. Um, so they'll speak. Uh, we're going to have the coach's announcement. I'll announce the head coach and then he can uh, introduce his uh, assistants that are with him today and Mike Spackman is going to help him with the microphone. And you can do that from your tables. And then we're going to line the players up over here, be New Hampshire first. Doesn't matter what order, you're not wearing numbers today so that doesn't matter. Um, and just announce who you are and where you're from, your school. That's, that's all we need today. Because we do have reporters here, and I want to thank the media for coming today. It's, it's awesome to have you guys back, and uh, much appreciated. So this gives them a chance to see who you are, and, and you may have met them already. And uh, so they may be doing some interviews. I'm sure they will. And then after the New Hampshire players, we'll sit down and have the uh, Vermont players come up. Same thing, name and school that you're from and uh, we'll proceed to lunch after that. Roughly about 12.30 for lunch, about 12.30. And then after that, uh, we'll have the media interviews with the players. Uh, we're gonna have the two ambassadors here, of course. They have some shirts, like your, uh, the gray shirts, gray t-shirts, uh, both New Hampshire and Vermont. We ask that you sign them, interact with the, with the ambassadors, and get to meet the parents, uh, it's much appreciated and then uh, we can send them off with a souvenir of, of this game. And don't be afraid to sign, if you see a Vermont t-shirt, don't be afraid to sign it. If you see a New Hampshire t-shirt, don't be afraid to sign it. Um, and, and again, that's very much appreciated. And then after that, we're done. We'll have you back on the field at two o'clock, so don't eat too much, um, for practice I should say, uh, on the field at two, and then we're out of here. So that's how the day is gonna go. Any questions? Pretty simple, and we'll get started. 
So first of all, I'd like to introduce Grace's mom. Um, Amanda will come up and just kind of give uh, her thoughts on Shriner's children's and uh, their experience uh, in treating their daughter. Thank you. Um, I did not prepare anything in writing, so, um, but I don't really need to. Um, Shriners has a special place in our heart. Um, when Grace was born two months early, she had a pretty traumatic birth. Um, and in November of 2020, we found out that Grace um, had cerebral palsy. We stayed pretty local for about six months, um, just seeing doctors at Dartmouth-Hitchcock but we very quickly realized that they did not have the expertise to deal with um, Grace's um, diagnosis. We went to Shriners in Springfield, Mass, um, I believe in June of 21, um, and immediately they were welcoming. Grace was comfortable. They made her feel at home. Um, and they immediately gave us a plan moving forward. They gave us hope right out the gate that Grace was gonna live a successful life and that she was going to do all the things that other children would do as well. Um, our biggest fear was that Grace would never be able to have independence on her own and you know, go to school with other kids and interact and play um, and within the first six months of us going to Shriners, Grace was able to stand unassisted just for a few moments, but it was enough to keep our hopes and dreams alive. Um, and Grace has graduated from just holding on to things to being able to walk by just holding one hand, um, using a walker independently. She plays and runs with her friends. She uses the structures at school. Um, Grace was in a dance recital last year, her first, um, and she did amazing, and we owe all of it to Shriners. We continue to see them, they continue to have a plan for Grace, for her care, to continue to keep her moving forward. So we appreciate you guys doing this for Shriners and for us. Sorry about my water bottle and the paperwork interference. Uh, my wife's not here to take care of me, and she usually keeps me straight. Uh, thank you, Amanda, and thank you, Grace. You did a great job. You know, she, she's a little bit shy, so after lunch, you can interact with her, hopefully, like I said, and sign some shirts that we have available, and, and just, uh, if you would, just meet and greet her. That would be awesome. Next, we have a, a gentleman that uh, has traveled from Holyoke, Massachusetts, to visit, us, uh, visit with us, and he's also a, a patient at Shriners Children's uh, Springfield, Mass. Uh, and interesting note, he plays football. So we're going to have Noah come up and give a few words. And if you would welcome Noah, it's much appreciated. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having us here today. My name is Noah Gamash and this is my mom, Melissa. I am 17 years old and currently going into 12th grade at Pioneer Valley Regional High School in North of Mass. I've been a patient at Shriner since I was 10 days old. I was born with a right club foot. After about six years of trying unusual ways to accommodate my active lifestyle and support my foot and ankle, the doctors mentioned amputation. At first, my family was shocked and saddened to hear the news that there was not anything else we could do to save my foot. Although amputation is a very scary and major decision, it was the absolute best decision for my quality of life. Having the amputation for me solved all the issues with my foot and leg length discrepancy, all with one surgery. On June 16, 2015, I had my sinus amputation. I took the summer to recuperate 
and in the fall I started fourth grade on time with the prosthetic. Since my surgery, I have continued to do activities like swimming, playing basketball, baseball, and football. I may not do things exactly like my friends, but my family and I figure out a way for me to do anything I set my mind to. I cannot compete in any of these sports without the support of Brock and his staff at Shriners Pops Springfield. He keeps my legs in one piece even when I'm breaking them weekly. I have fallen in love with football. I started playing in 7th and 8th grade. I took a few years off because my school did not have enough kids to play. But thankfully I got to play last year and I am so excited for this upcoming season. I took driver's education and got my license with no restrictions on my license. I drive a normal first car with no additional modifications. This milestone has had my mother worried since my surgery and she's so proud of me for taking this leap. It did take me about three months from the time I took my permit test to get the nerve to drive, but once I did, nothing could stop me. In our small town of Northville, Mass, I'm the only person with a prosthetic, so it's nice to see kids ask me questions and not be afraid of me. Someday they will venture out of our small town and meet someone just like me, and this time they will not be afraid of people with a prosthetic because they have already met someone. So thanks to Noah and Melissa, his mom, for coming up today and, and, and speaking to you guys. Same thing, we have some commemorative t-shirts that we asked the players to sign. And what an incredible story for these two, uh, these two people. It's, uh, it's wonderful. And, and that's what we do at Shriners Children's for the health care of um, those that are less fortunate than maybe you guys are. Uh, with able to run, jump, and never. But you can see that they're doing that. Uh, Noah's playing football. That's, that's, that's just incredible. Um, and uh, we had a patient uh, previously uh, uh, from Lebanon, New Hampshire that has uh, a left arm deficiency. He played football uh, for Lebanon High School uh, a few years ago. And it's just, it's awesome to see athletes out there or, or uh, the, our patients that we treat uh, able to live a, a more normal life and excel uh, with their uh, endeavors. Um, at this time, uh, I'm going to introduce the uh, New Hampshire coach. I think we only have the one microphone. That'll work. You don't want to hear me talk anyway. So we'll go over to Coach Sanborn. Uh, thank you guys. My name is Chris Sanborn. I'm the head coach of Plymouth High School in Plymouth, New Hampshire. Uh, joining me, I have uh, Mike Downs. Uh, he's from Plymouth. I have Colby Moore, who's also on my staff at Plymouth. Nick Cass, on my staff at Plymouth. Doug Johnson, who is the uh, new head coach at Lebanon High School. Uh, Turned from Lebanon High School back, he's doing a great job joining us. Uh, with us, we have Kevin Long, who's also from Plymouth. And uh, Tom Lamb, my defensive coordinator. Uh, Tom is from Plymouth, but Tom is a, a Hartford guy, coach at Hartford High School, mom for a lot of years. Uh, and that's the staff. Thank you guys for having us. Um, excited for Saturday. Hi, I'm Greg Walsh, uh, head coach for the Vermont Shrine team out of Windsor High School at Windsor, Vermont. Um, also with a partner like Coach Lamb. Uh, with me, we've got three guys that are pulled out of retirement. <laughs> coach Empey, Mike Empey. Matt Deager, Brian Dyfellis, and then from the Windsor staff, Jamie Perry, Jamie Richardson, from Milton, Dustin Rock, and from Windsor, Zane Burke. I just want to thank everyone very much for uh, the opportunity, thanks to the, the Shriners, um, the ambassadors that are here, and just for such a great event. Appreciate everything. Thank you. Okay, next week we want to meet the uh, New Hampshire players, so if I could ask you uh, gentlemen to line up over here where Mr. Spackman is residing currently. Yeah.
speak into the microphone. Okay. We'll find out. Name the school. I'm Austin Bouch, I'm from Ball High School. Well, I'm Hayden Fromey from Exeter, New Hampshire. Brian Lover, Ball High School. Anthony Amaro, Londonary High School. Ned Drino, Spalding High School. Caden Sanborn, Plymouth High. Harry D'Antonio, Samuel Regional High School. Zach Doward, Concord High School. Aiden Briarley, Kingswood High School. Joel Pulchinari, Bedford High School. Taylor Gallant, uh, West High School. Matt Clary, Plymouth High School. Wallace Jones, Bow High School. Dylan Welch, Plum High School. Jack Turnbeck, London Area High School. TJ Bailey, Home School. Austin Wells, Concord High. Michael Kiddo, Guilford High School. Noah Blake, Concord High. Gianni Ciotti, Plymouth High School. Tyler Gobin, Newport High School. Aiden Monahan, Merrimack Valley High. Rex Sullivan, Sanborn Regional High School. Trick Sutton, Bedford High School. Trey Baker, Timberland. Brad Richards, Exeter High School. Carter Polari, Newport High School. Joey Pickett, St. Thomas High School. Lucas Smith, Stevens High School. Colby Shepard, Stevens High School. Daniel Farnham, Fall Mountain High School. Cam Bonner, Annenberg High. Luke Weston, Manna. Owen Simon, Exeter High School. Devin Puckett, St. Thomas Aquinas High School. Danny McGonigal, Merrimack Valley High School. Jordan Espo, New Market High School. Kyle Dunn, Merrimack High School. Thank you, gentlemen. Next, we'll go to the uh, Vermont team. We'll have you line up over here. Who wants to be first? Luke Delianco, Rutland High School. Team Hughes, Rutland High School. Cross Garibaldi, U32. Mason Ford, Windsor High School. Ben Riney, Middlebury Union High School. Cole Schnorr, Middlebury Union High School. Miles Kaplan, Burn Burn Academy. Caden Haskell, Bellis Falls Union High School. Jake Moore, Bellis Falls Union High School. Jacob Crossman, Burn Burn Academy. Dylan Perry, Bellis Falls Union High School. Cameron Stone, Middlebury Union High School. Logan World, Windsor High School. 
Sean Gibson, BFA Fairfax. David Dorn, Fairhaven Union. AJ Aldridge from Harper Hard. Braden Miller, Mount Anthony. Josh Brown, SF High School. Josh Ruthen, Mount Anthony Union High School. Trey Tixiano, Champlain Valley Union. Jordan D'Amico, Mount Mansfield Union. Amy Nasser, Mount Anthony Union High School. Eric Moroy, Burn Burn Academy. Uh, Connor Tierney from Harvard High School. Gavin Kenny Young, St. John Berry Academy. Dawson Wilkins, St. John Berry Academy. Caleb Russell, Matt Abraham. Kevon Parks, Otter Valley Union High School. Uh, Zach Wilson, Spalding High School. Caleb Lesser, Pleasure High School. Tanner Robbins, Essex High School. Tristan Evans, Bradford High School. Jameson Nystrom, Bellows Falls. Ryan Bemke, the Champlain Union, Champlain Valley Union. Max Cito, the Champlain Valley Union High School. Alex Provost, Champlain Valley Union High School. Jonah Bassett, Rowan High School. Quinn Murphy, St. Johnsbury Academy. I'd just like to say just a, a brief announcement before we head over to lunch that uh, this has really been an exciting year. We had the golf tournament yesterday which um, uh, the players were on the field and coaches were here so they couldn't participate. But we had a phenomenal tournament yesterday. We had uh, 21 teams signed up. Uh, it was a great day, good fundraising event to support this game. But the other thing that's exciting is uh, the players and cheerleaders this year together, combined, have raised just under $59,000 in support of our three hospitals. So why is that exciting? Because it's a new record. Uh, this, this group of athletes has uh, brought in more fundraising uh, revenue than any other previous team. So that, that, that's exciting. And that shows the efforts and the uh, commitment that you have to this game. Very much appreciated. And we're not done yet. We still have a few more days, right? So that, uh, uh, at least I recognize that effort because uh, it is, it's the, the greatest birthday present that, uh, that I could receive. Um, just to announce it, today's my birthday. Why, thank you. But who are you supposed to thank? The other, yeah, me. There you go, kid. So at this time, we'll uh, we're going to break for lunch, and uh, I'd like to ask the media if they would go first, simply because it's hard to eat and write at the same time. Uh, at least with me, I ended up with all over my bib, and this gives them an opportunity to go through the line and uh, complete their lunch, and then they can do the interviews. Uh, remember, after you eat. Uh, Search out the ambassadors, the two ambassadors, uh, Noah's over here, Grace is over here, and we'll have the uh, paraphernalia the apparel that you can sign for, uh, for each of them. And then when we're all done, I'd like to get a group team photo. And it looks like um, due to the sun background, we may be better off over on this side, and that'll be everybody, both teams, coaches, everybody in. We want uh, the ambassadors. And we're going to do a group photo so we can uh, use it for marketing for, uh, for the Shriners Children's in, in, of New England in Springfield, Mass. So, media.
All right, the annual Shrine Maple Sugar Bowl game is coming up again, uh, once again, uh, here on Saturday, August 4th. And uh, we have a presentation here on PEG TV, and with us is uh, Jack Healy of uh, Castleton University now, and uh, also Jack will be the announcer for this year's Shrine Maple Sugar Bowl game, a duty he's held for many years. And uh, how many years is it, Jack? Well, uh, back uh, in the 90s, I uh, did uh, games uh, with, uh, we videotaped uh, games uh, and so forth. I did that for about 10 years, and then starting in 2000, I started to do the games on the radio and now uh, on the internet and uh, also uh, a few radio stations as well. So it's been the radio since 2000, so it's been over 20 years. Sure. That's outside of the one game that you did, uh, Greg McCormick, I, <laughs> I think over in Windsor. It was in Windsor. That's exactly right. You, you weren't able to do it for some reason, or I don't know what happened, but anyway, ended up doing that with Keith Harrington. That was a lot of fun. And with you is uh, Tom Haley of the uh, Rutland Herald. Tom will be covering uh, the Sears game, and uh, Tom has uh, seen many Shrine games over the years. I just had a conversation uh, with uh, Dave Katman, who we'll talk to here shortly. Dave was talking about uh, David Orr, who is one of the founding members of this game, and I thought, well, he'd been here for 50 years, and uh, you've, you've seen many, many as well. Tom, your thoughts on this? I covered the uh, 1975 Shrine Maple Sugar Bowl game, a 12 to 7 victory, I think, for Vermont. And the coach, Tom LaPlaca from Fairhaven, his quarterback, Kevin Perot. So I covered that game in 75 and every game since. Every and I know. Single game since. And I take a great deal of pleasure, as does many other people, in reading all your, all your little bits on the Shrine game over the years, all these little historical notes that. And you just put some in here recently, I think, in today's uh, paper. But uh, your thoughts on this year's Shrine game? You know, and you know, it's unfortunate that a lot of people don't appreciate the history. I was talking to a New Hampshire player, Colby Shepard, the other day. He's from Claremont, and he did not know that the founder of the game was Ted Lewis from Claremont. And I thought, you know, those kind of things should be passed down. If you live in a town, you should appreciate that kind of stuff. And he was very excited to find that out. And I was very amazed that he didn't know it. So, you know, the Shrine has such a great history when you think about it. Going back to 1954, that day, at, Nashua, New Hampshire's home and stadium, and who would have ever thought it would still be around and going strong in 2023? But it is. It's a great story, and boy, uh, I'll tell you. Uh, I remember Dave Nelson, the late Dave Nelson, one once told me he thought about writing a book on the history of the Shrine Maple Sugar Bowl. Never got to do it. If anybody ever does that, that's a heck of a story. Uh, Jack, well, that's your job, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you, uh, you've uh, been a part, as we said, as an announcer at many of the Shrine games, uh, the venue. This is a beautiful venue. You can probably, on camera here, see a little bit of it in the background. We have the Spartan Field here. For many years, this was at Dartmouth. They moved it to, to Windsor for a couple of years, and I guess some uh, Plymouth, maybe, uh, uh, some of the history of it. But it's yeah. been here for several years in a beautiful venue. Yeah, it's, it's great here. We might add, it's now called Dave Walk Stadium here, a name for... The former president at Castleton University, now Vermont State University, Castleton, by the way. Some changes over the years. Uh, Tom mentioned that first uh, Shrine game in Nashville, New Hampshire. It's also been in Manchester, New Hampshire, Dartmouth for many years, uh, Castleton for several years now. Uh, we mentioned a couple of years at Windsor and uh, one or two years at Plymouth. But uh, and, and also, yep, Centennial Field in Burlington has also been a venue for the Shrine game. Uh, you know, I mentioned about uh, my first uh, broadcast of the Shrine game, we're doing the tape and then uh, the radio. Uh, I, I first started to go to the uh, Shrine game uh, in the 70s as a spectator. I haven't been there every year, but I've been uh, to the, most of them since about 1977 or so. In my first Shrine game as a spectator was 1971, the year that Mount St. Joseph's 
Ricky Bradowski scored three touchdowns and ran for like 125 yards in the first half alone. And that, and everybody knows about Ricky Bradowski and the. The other thing that you mentioned about uh, the publicity that Tom has uh, given uh, to the Shrine Game, the Shrine Game has always been big in the Rutland area, and I'd say Rutland, uh, certainly Rutland itself and the, the surrounding area, it's it's always been big, uh, uh, perhaps bigger in the Rutland area than it is anywhere else in the two-state uh, region, and, uh, and a lot of it is because of the publicity that uh, Tom has given over the years, and uh, certainly uh, previous to Tom as well, and uh, the fact that uh, so many great uh, players have come uh, from this area. And I know what Tom has mentioned many times, and it happens to be the 50th anniversary of what might have been the greatest uh, Shrine game of all, the great come from behind uh, victory by Vermont, where MSJ's Robbie Gilligan scored the tying touchdown and the extra point uh, gave Vermont the victory. Uh, Tom uh, mentions that game. Again, it's the 50th anniversary, so it's very appropriate, I, and that was in 1973. I was not at that game, but I did listen to it on the radio uh, that particular day. Tom likes to mention that the a radio station or radio announcer somewhere uh, had uh, given the wrong score, assuming that uh, New Hampshire had won the game and Vermont came back. I might add, this is my first chance publicly, that was not I that did that, by the way. <laughs> and Jack, Jack mentioned the the enormity of the Tri Maple Sugar Bowl in the Rowland area, and, and he and I always say one way we measure that or gauge that is during the introductions when a Rutland or MSJ player was announced. Remember, the game was not at Castleton then. It was not in our backyard. It was over at Dartmouth College, and yet the decibel level was louder when a Rutland or MSJ player was introduced. And I think we kind of use that as a, as a barometer. Exactly. And of course, on the Vermont side, it's always been better attended, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, but that's, uh, I don't know whether it became uh, because uh, New Hampshire was complacent about winning uh, so many years. We might add the uh, 70s, though, we've made reference to the game in 73. Uh, in the 70s, Vermont actually dominated that decade. So. Uh, and I and I like the uh, format now. Uh, people talk about uh, the East-West game that they have in uh, New Hampshire, and it cuts into the uh, talent pool a little bit. But I think it kind of evens things out a little bit. And uh, it's a great honor to be a, a member of the Shrine team, regardless of uh, what the pool of talent might be. And I got to think that a lot of kids in New Hampshire feel that same way. That it's it's about the Shrine game. Well, speaking of that, as you just said, that the entire Vermont team walked behind you here so I uh, want to question uh, Tom just your thoughts uh, I know the game was endangered a few years ago and uh, to Dave walks credit in Castleton University it came here and it was uh, suffering a little bit just as some of the scores were a bit lopsided I understand but uh, here it's kind of been resurrected and as well, Jack was just mentioning you get some of the uh, division two II and three players so they gave the game uh, more of an equal feel just your thoughts uh, on this year's team we have a good uh, contingent of talent from uh, Rutland County playing in this uh, game uh, this year as well. Yeah, I have no idea really how these teams match up. I don't know how anybody does. Uh, and, and you just never know. You think you know your own team and it's a great team. But I, I, I like to go back and use the example of the year that Joel Perry from Fairhaven who went on to be the Freedom Football Conference Offensive Player of the Year at Plymouth State was the Vermont quarterback on a Vermont team that was just stacked. I mean, there was a great Vermont team. And they lost 38 to 20. And I'm walking down the steps of uh, Dartmouth Memorial Field after the game, and Ken Laporto, the coach of Winnicottet High School, says to me, I could have told you this. This is the best New Hampshire team ever. So I don't, it's a hard game to prognosticate, but 
I think, to your point, you're right on. It is now a competitive game, and it's really hard to tell who will win, and I think that's good for the game. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, we had a close game last year. It was 7 uh, nothing A couple of years ago, uh, Vermont was driving uh, for a touchdown, even I believe the score was something like 22 to nothing from two years ago. Vermont was driving and the thunderstorm came up, lightning, and about 40 seconds to go in the game, they stopped it right there. But So Vermont has lost the last three years, but uh, won three years in a row previous to that. Yeah, I think it's a much more competitive game. and. People talk about uh, New Hampshire's advantage over the years with the uh, population of the cities and so forth, and they still have the advantage that way, but uh, the, the situation with the East-West uh, football game that they have in New Hampshire takes away some of the players, because if they played in the East-West game in New Hampshire, uh, they cannot play in the Shrine game, and uh, again, uh, that uh, cuts into the uh, talent pool a little bit, but I think it evens things out. And it's really not fair to Vermont, because I've heard it over the years, well, Vermont's playing the New Hampshire backup team or whatever, and I don't think that's always the case, really. And it, and it not only disrespects Vermont players, but it disrespects the New Hampshire players that are also in the game. But I, I think the game is really better than ever now, no, no doubt about it. One more well, thing, yeah. to, to, I just don't mean to interrupt, uh, what to bring up is uh, I just heard the uh, moderator here talking about the numbers and how they're up, the revenues are up, uh, which is right. ultimately what the game is all about. So they're raising a lot of, uh, more money and uh, that's a good thing. I would like to see the, I would like to see the attendance get back to 17,000 the way, way it was during the heyday of Dartmouth. Of course, then it would have to move from here, but um, you know, I, I just think, uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a great game, and the thing it has that the Chad doesn't is a long history. Players in the game who had fathers in the game, who had grandfathers in the game, uh, you know, like the Welch kid from New Hampshire playing in this year's game. His grandfather, Peter Welch, played in, uh, what, 68? Uh, Shrine Maple Sugar Bowl. So you get all that history. And I think that's just a great part of it. And that uh, note, well said, Tom. It's Healy and Haley. Right, right behind you, Jack. Got my mic turned down. Right behind you here. If we can just turn around, I want to get a shot here on Peg TV of uh, the entire Vermont squad over there and hopefully we can see them good. This is a Media Day 2023 Shrine Maple Sugar Bowl game coming up 2023 edition at uh, Saturday right here at Castleton University Field. And I couldn't help but notice how beautiful the field looks. Uh, you're here every week. Did they do something different out there? It looks brighter. Yeah, well it is brighter because it's a new turf. Okay, They just why. put it in. I, of course the first football game it was here in 2009. So what are we talking about? Uh, 13, 14, 15 years ago, and it uh, and it, it, it kind of gets worn out, and they just uh, recently put the new turf in. So this is the first football game on the brand new turf at Dave Walk Stadium at Vermont State University, Castleton. Okay, I want to thank you very much, uh, you. Jack, and uh, we'll be back uh, with a little more. Hopefully we can have uh, Coach Dave Capman, Pulteney High School football coach with us. He's also the Vermont Athletic Director for the Shrine, and uh, he said he would like uh, to have an interview with him, so we'll be right back. We are back here at uh, Castleton, which will be the uh, uh, this year's uh, host uh, school, or ha actually has been for several years, uh, for the Shrine Maple Sugar Bowl game. And uh, with us is uh, Coach Dave Capman, head coach of the uh, Pulteney uh, Blue Devils for many years, and uh, Dave is also the athletic director for the uh, Vermont Shrine uh, football program. And uh, Dave, uh, welcome to uh, Peg TV, and just your your thoughts on uh, the game uh, this year. And uh, well, you've been a part of this for many years, but uh, you're still at it. Yeah, I'm still at it. I, I really enjoy doing this. Uh, uh, I coached and played in this game, and uh, looking forward to this year's group. I think that uh, the coach. Both teams you know, speak highly of their players, how well they are, and how, how well they came in, in uh, condition, and everyone looking forward to a great game. Well, you mentioned how you coached and played in this game, so I know I've uh, read about you before. That was uh, the 1965 team? 65. Played in that team, and uh, for quite often, a lot of the uh, players here, and I just want to, while I'm talking to you here, we got a, a group picture here of uh, the entire squad, both uh, New Hampshire and Vermont, right here. So we'll try to get that uh, here on 
on TV as well. But uh, Dave, uh, just your thoughts on the Rutland County contingent that we have playing this year. I know we get a good group, good selection every year. Some players uh, from throughout Rutland County will be represented in this game this year. Yeah, I think it's well representative. Uh, you know, they got all of the best players that can participate in the game. Uh, I'm disappointed that we don't have a player, Pulteney, but you know that happens. There are times when uh, you, you don't have the player that can play in the Shrine game. But uh, looking forward to it. Uh, a lot of the boys that here, especially the Rutland and Fairhaven boys, participated in what they call the Pulteney Vipers, or the Viper football team in Pulteney that practice down there and play games out of there. So. We have a good brand of football here in Rutland County for sure. You're the head of the uh, Pulteney uh, program, which I understand uh, this will be your last year. Is that right? Yeah, this is going to be my last year. Uh, it, it was going to would have happened three years ago when my uh, oldest grandson was our quarterback. We won that state championship, but my wife said you're not being fair to your other two grandsons. And, and um, our, our youngest grandson is going to be a senior this year. So. All right. And you've been uh, how many years is that officially? Uh, I've been the head coach since 1980. I started coaching in uh, 1968 with coach uh, Dean Houghton and uh, just kind of went up through the ranks, a volunteer. We had a freshman team one year. We had 50, uh, 22 freshmen. I became the freshman coach and just and just moved up through the ranks and became the head coach. Okay, and I just wanted to ask you a quick question. I heard one of the uh, moderators talk about uh, how the numbers of uh, this game, since it's been at this venue, has, uh, has gone up, and uh, revenue-wise, uh, the amount uh, donated to the Shrine has uh, also gone up significantly, and uh, they had uh, like a banner year this year, one of the top years as far as funds go. Yeah, they did. They raised uh, $59,000 just in, uh, it's, it's like a GoFundMe page. That's not the title that they use, but uh, the players, the cheerleaders, they all do a good job, and uh, we all look forward for, for them to do that. So it's a pleasure to have them raise all that money. Okay, well, it's great that uh, I know the game was struggling there for a little while. They brought it to this venue, which is really basically right in your backyard, so it works out uh, great for you, but just a super place to host this, uh, this game. Yeah, it, it works well over here. Uh, you know, we have both teams on the same site, uh, and having the game here, too, we don't have to move them in the past. They, we practiced here and moved to, to Hanover and Dartmouth to play the game, but it works well here. Castleton's very receptive to this, and uh, and, and that, you know, it's nice to see this part of the state by the New Hampshire, New Hampshire players. All right, well, I want to thank you very much for taking a few minutes to come on camera with us. I know this is your final year coaching at uh, Pulteney High School. Congratulations. I uh, personally saw you for 25 years over there do a super job with that program uh, and uh, football, basketball, and all your duties over there. I kind of miss uh, doing that, actually, but uh, thank you very much. No, thanks a lot. Congratulations and good luck. Back at Castleton University, or Vermont State University, I get confused with all these name changes here. But uh, at uh, Dave Walk Stadium, which uh, will be the host uh, t uh, host uh, field for this year's uh, 2023 Shrine Maple Sugar Bowl game, head coach Greg Balsh with us uh, right now here on uh, Peg TV. And uh, Greg, uh, welcome to our television cameras and uh, microphone. Thank you. And uh, quite an honor to be named the uh, head coach for the uh, Shrine Maple Sugar Bowl team in Vermont. Is this your first run at it, being the head coach? Uh, this is actually second. Uh, second. We, yeah, we did this game in 2018. Okay, and uh, well, 2018, fast forward 2023, whole different group of guys here, and your thoughts on this year's team? Uh, it is definitely, a, I think it's different every year. Uh, this group has been fantastic. We've got players, uh, you know, from all over the state of Vermont. Uh, we got 38 here. They're healthy. Attitudes, effort are all perfect. Um, I think everyone's understanding what the game's about, so uh, it's been a great time. We're very excited for Saturday. I was just talking with uh, Coach Capman about, uh, well, the big job of trying to put together uh, a, a team team for a game and basically do it in more or less a week. He tells me uh, they meet fairly regular other ways throughout the year, but still co quite a task uh, to try to get everything uh, put together in a week. Uh, the game uh, starts or uh, is played on Saturday. How do you go about that? I think you're exactly right. It's a, I was talking to one of the coaches today and saying it's a big puzzle. You know, you, you think you know things and then you get here and you start figuring out, you know, what makes the best team, where positions that people should play. Uh, you learn about who can who can learn new things quickly and, and uh, all of that. And you have to put together, you know, the best puzzle that you can. So I think it kind of goes in phases for me. The beginning is we're starting to teach uh, offense, defense, and special teams, and we're also getting people in a little bit of shape or, or working out the areas that hurt. And then
and then the middle phase is where you're, you're really fine tuning that and, and narrowing down things. And then I think that final phase, you have to kind of polish things up and really be ready to go on Saturday. And then obviously you have uh, people that are, are very skilled at certain positions like quarterback, for example, to try to decide who's going to be your quarterback when you have uh, three, four excellent candidates or whatever. That's kind of a tough thing, I'm sure. It's very challenging. Yeah, I think when I did it in 2018, we had seven or eight quarterbacks in camp. You know, this time I think we have maybe four, so it got a little bit easier. But um, it's it's back to the puzzle piece. You figure out, you know, who might be even more valuable to the team on defense or at another position on offense, and you're ultimately just trying to get the best group out there that you can. Okay, we're talking with 2023 Shrine Maple Sugar Bowl coach Greg Balsh and uh, Greg's team, uh, the Vermont team, will be on the Spartan Field coming up here on Saturday. Uh, just your your thoughts on your opponents this year. They were all here today. New Hampshire always puts a, a great team together, some great football uh, there, and I'm sure they're uh, ready to go just like you are this Saturday. I am certain they are. You know, it's a lot different than the regular season football that, that we have where we know something about our opponents. If we're playing Coach Capman's team, we, we know something about what to expect. This is totally different. It's We don't know the coaching staff from New Hampshire. It's not a, a group that we coach against, and of course the players are coming from everywhere and you don't even know what positions they'll be in. So it's a bit of a black box box or a mystery as far as that goes, but I can say that I've heard a lot of positive things about uh, Coach Sanborn and his staff in general, so I'm sure they're going to be more than ready. Okay, just a couple of more things. I'm sure great memories created by everybody just to be a part of this. It's a beautiful day today, uh, just a, a really nice uh, show they put on uh, here today, and uh, a lot of these guys will go forward, uh, probably many of them playing in their last football game today or on this Saturday. Yeah, they, I think I think that's exactly right. You know, one of them was telling me earlier today that I pulled him out of retirement by you know when we selected him for the Shrine game, and I, I think that's absolutely true. It's um, it's just so exciting to see how they build the camaraderie throughout the week and to interact with the players. And then I you know if, I'm sure it'll be like it was in 2018 where those relationships stay both for the players with each other but also for the players with the coaches. So a lot of fun. Okay, and then finally we had a couple of speeches by uh, people that the Shrine game itself has uh, helped or will be helping some in the past and of course uh, in the future and just uh, it's uh, I'm sure quite a feeling to participate in this knowing that uh, the game itself is really helping a lot of people and has in the past. It's such an honor and a privilege and you know it's it's today and hearing from the ambassadors I think when it sinks in for a lot of people that haven't experienced the game before you know the players or, or coaches that haven't been involved before and it absolutely brings home you know what we're doing we're, we're raising money for just a tremendous cause um, and it's an event event that, that brings out a lot of community spirit as well. So uh, that's that's what it's about. Okay, the 2023 Shrine Maple Sugar Bowl game, Vermont and New Hampshire at Dave Walk Stadium, Castleton, uh, Vermont. Uh, head coach Greg Balsh, uh, thank you very much uh, for taking a few minutes uh, to talk to us and uh, much luck in Saturday's game. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay.